Hello and welcome to another Molly Rambles video. I am so thrilled to have you here and today I want to talk about my vision for the future of blindness. Do you like the little pun? My vision for the future? You get it. Brilliant. Thank you. I Thank you. Brilliant. I'll applaud myself. Thank you. Oh, I just finished filming, but I just want to give a quick shout out to my Patreon. Uh, I got this idea to sit down and talk about this conversation on my weekly Patreon live stream. Thanks to Mansion, who has been a longtime Patreon member. If you would like to learn more, you can go to patreon.com slash, what is it? That's right, slash Molly Burke. Thanks, Elton. Appreciate you stepping in with that. Um, so head over there. There is a ton of benefits, including content that you won't see anywhere else. Updates, private secret behind the scenes updates, photos that don't get posted anywhere else, weekly live streams, and more. So check that out. You guys know that I'm a big believer in the social model of disability, social versus medical model. If you don't know, you don't know. This isn't the video where I'm going to explain it, so you can go do some research on that and come back to join us when you're up to speed. And I am not a big believer in cure culture, or I'm not a big fan of cure culture. I am not against the research of cures. What I'm not talking about it in this video. I've made a video about why I'm personally not interested in being cured. And frankly, I just don't think it's gonna happen. That's just the reality. Like I just simply do not believe that I will be cured in my lifetime. And I don't believe that most disabled people will be cured medically within our lifetime. And honestly, probably ever. I believe the cure to disability is in technology. And that's what I want to talk about because I don't believe the hardest part about being blind is that I can't see. I believe the hardest part about being blind is that the world isn't designed to accommodate me and people like me. The world has been designed to accommodate the average person, the perfect size medium human, and anybody who is outside of that box. It's like, well, well you just got to accommodate yourself and figure it out. And that's what we do. And that's what makes our life so difficult. Is there things that I would love to be able to see? Like my dazzling smile? Of course. But that's not what makes my life hard. The fact that I can't see in the mirror or see my mom's face or Elton, like those aren't the things that make my everyday life difficult. I get sad about it sometimes, but for the most part, I don't think about it. What makes my life difficult is when I go to pay for something and it's a touchscreen with no screen reader capabilities. When I use an elevator and it's a touchscreen with no screen reader capabilities and no accessibility features built in, and you just feel like you literally don't exist. Like to whoever the heck designed that inaccessible feature, you just don't matter. That's what makes life hard. That's when I have to be like, hey, can somebody help me? And I want to be as independent as possible, just like everybody else. And I truly believe that the technology that we are starting to see come out in 10, 15, 20 years will absolutely change the reality for disabled people. And specifically, I'm speaking as a blind person. It's going to change the game for blind people. And I feel like in the future, and I don't quite know when that is, but sometime in the future, blindness won't exist. But it's not because of stem cell research or retinal replacements or anything like that. It's going to be because of things like AI and VR. And I want to be very clear, like we all know on here, if you're, if you hang out with me a lot on this corner of the internet, I'm not like super techie. I am not really well versed in this stuff. So I'm speaking about this like from a novice, okay? I'm just kind of sharing what I'm seeing um, trending in the tech world and where I think it's going to be applied to help disabled and specifically blind people. We already know that from the time that I was born in 1994 to today, technology has already changed the game for us. The things that young blind kids are able to do and learn independently now compared to when I was their age is night and day. And I'm so excited for them, but I'm even more excited for 10, 15, 20 years from now when being blind just isn't a barrier. Because the reality is as positive as I am about my disability and as empowered as I try to be, like it is hard and there are barriers. There are barriers to entry, there are barriers to access that still exist every single day for blind individuals. But I really believe that technology is going to be the key to removing those, which is ultimately just proof that the social model of disability works and is real and more funding and resources should be going to building an accessible and inclusive environment 
versus to these labs that are trying to find these cures that may or may not help like a very small group of people someday. And to what degree it will help, we don't know. That said, obviously curing like things like terminal illness is very different. Um, but in terms of like curing blindness, it is such a wide spectrum of what causes the blindness in the first place. And then when you get to the micro level, like with RP, there are so many forms of RP caused by different genes. So targeting all of those individual genes, like it's just, come on now. But technology is something that is so much easier to adapt and cater to the needs of multiple different people, even living with the same disease. So for example, self-driving cars. Recently in LA, I tried Waymo, which is the first company who is creating self-driving cars as rideshare. So an example of a barrier to access that I currently experience basically every single time I want to have get anywhere independently via Uber or Lyft, which are our current biggest ride sharing options in Los Angeles, is being denied access because I have a guide dog. Or frankly, even if I didn't have a guide dog, the fear of my safety. As a petite blind woman who often gets in the back of a car alone, I would be scared for my safety if I had a cane with me. And that's just the honest truth. Whereas in a self-driving vehicle, not only would nobody be there to deny me access with my guide dog, but nobody would be there to potentially make me feel unsafe if I was traveling alone with my guide dog. And I can tell you that testing Waymo, by the way, they're not paying me. This isn't sponsored by anybody. I just happened to have an opportunity, like they were handing out coupons at Century City Mall in LA and my parents got a coupon and were like, Molly, you have to come try it. So that's why I got this opportunity. Um, it started in San Francisco and I believe it's pretty rolled out there and they're slowly rolling out in Los Angeles now, but basically we took it and my parents who can see and who can both drive said that it drove better than any ride share they've been in. Like they felt extremely safe. It was such an amazing experience. Oh my God, it made me so excited for the future of ride sharing. And even further down the line for the future of car ownership. Like one day, I could potentially own my own self-driving car. That is so incredibly exciting to me and would be probably arguably the most freeing thing for blind people because it's definitely up there in the top three most difficult, frustrating, annoying things about being blind is that we can't drive. I would say most blind people that's in their top three. And so removing that barrier, being able to access ride sharing without fear and being able to access your own mode of transportation independently. It's mind blowing and I've heard about it my whole life, this dream of the future and I honestly like never felt like it would become a reality. But in the back of that Waymo, I was like, no, this will become a reality. I'm only 30 years old. This will be a reality in my lifetime. I believe it and I, I can't wait because it'll be life changing and I want to insert some of the footage that I got in the Waymo here. This is so cool. Okay, I'm getting in. This is so yeah, this is crazy. I'm with my mom and my dad, my, by the way, and my guide dog. This is the most wild experience. My God, this could be my life one day. Yeah, it doesn't reject the guide dog. That's a nice change. So I just tested the app to see if it's screen reader accessible. And so far what I've tried is accessible. So the steering wheel actually is like fully turning on its own. The blinker sound goes on when we're turning on the screen. Apparently it tells you like what it's doing and why it's making the driving decisions it's making. And I can say like eight minutes into the ride, I already have completely stopped thinking about the fact that I'm in a driverless car. I feel completely safe and comfortable. This is awesome. Another thing that has recently become a reality is accessible VR headsets. Apple recently released their, what is it? Apple Vision Pro, I think it's called, um, which is the first VR headset that is fully accessible to the blind and visually impaired. Prior to that, I don't believe any VR headsets had screen reader and zoom capabilities. Whereas of course, in true Apple form, they have released it with voiceover and Zoom. And I have not had an opportunity to try it, but I will be trying it next time I'm in LA. Uh, as you're watching this, I'm currently in Abu Dhabi for the Forbes 3050 Summit. Um, but once I'm back in LA, I am absolutely trotting myself over to an Apple store and giving that a go. 
because I really think it has the opportunity to once again provide so much more freedom and independence to my community, which is so exciting. Currently, I've only seen people with more usable vision than me trying it. I've seen some people on YouTube and TikTok and stuff giving it a go. Uh, typically, those people have been Zoom users and uh, have been able to gain more visually through the headset than I would be able to. So I'm really intrigued to see what the voiceover element is like. Um, I've seen a little bit, but not enough for me to like fully share what that will be like and what I think it would be able to provide somebody with my level of vision loss. But what I have seen from people with more vision who can use Zoom is that they are able to actually see things more clearly, color contrast, gain more depth perception by being able to change the color contrast, being able to read things that are further away because they are able to zoom in and it's close to their face now, um, being able to see colors more vividly because it's backlit and things like that are absolutely game-changing and life-changing. Things that I have heard would be helpful for somebody with my level of vision loss is things like being able to read signs, uh, read text, tell you where people are, describe images. All of those things, well, yes, I can do most of them currently through my phone. I have to open an app on my phone, hand, hold my phone up, scan it around, whereas this is a wearable device where you're literally just turning your head where I could, maybe not tomorrow because it would be, a, it, we're not there yet, but I could see a world 10 years or even five or three years from now where blind people are able to walk around in everyday life wearing these VR headsets and getting this real-time helpful information as they navigate. That could be really helpful. We're going to look like, what's that character, Jordy from Star Trek? Yes. Yeah, that's what we're gonna look like. And honestly, I'm here for it. I am here for it. As long as I can put like fun decals and customize it, match all my, oh, I could bling it out. I could have a fully rhinestoned one. That's the future. Rhinestone cane, step aside. I want rhinestone VR headsets. Yes. And similarly, robotic guide dogs. You know, we, we have the WeWalk cane, which I feel like has been the first venture of creating some kind of mobility aid that harnesses the power of technology uh, with a tool that we have been well used to for decades now as a blind community. I did make a video on it. My experience wasn't fantastic. Granted, it was near a first impression. So I think it would take a lot more practice to really gain the benefits. And keep in mind, I'm also not a cane user. I've been a guide dog user for the majority of my life. Um, but robotic guide dogs is something we've heard murmurings of for years. And I did see somebody at the um, Consumer Electronics Show demo basically what, what this could look like in the future. Was it called the iGlide? What was it called? I, I, if I can remember the name, I'm gonna pop it up and, and write it in the description box and I'll share as much info as I can in the description box below about these things that I'm speaking about. But basically you held on to the handle and it was on wheels and rolled itself on around it would stop at curbs, it would pull you around obstacles the same way a guide dog would. You're holding a handle just like a guide dog handle, um, but smaller, and you're putting your arm out in front of you, same with a cane or guide dog, but this device is navigating for you and rolling you on along. What? Like, that is so cool. And don't get me wrong, I love my guide dogs, okay? There's no way in which a piece of technology can ever replace Elton John or Gallup or Gypsy or Ben Ben and what they provide for me in other ways, like socially and emotionally. So I think I would always have a guide dog, but the option to have a robotic guide dog that is simply stored away in my closet that when Elton is sick, when Elton can't come, like right now I'm in Dubai and Abu Dhabi on my own with my cane. And we all know that that is just not my preferred mobility aid. So in a world where I could have Elton, who I use on a regular basis, but have my robotic guide dog in my closet that I pull out and bring when he is sick or when we've had an exhausting day and he's like just so pooped and he needs a break, 
or when I'm traveling to somewhere where I can't bring him. That would be a game-changing option for me because it provides all the same freedom and independence that a guide dog provides, which is one of the major benefits of a guide dog, but without some of the downfalls. Think of for people who are allergic to dogs, scared of dogs, who simply don't like dogs. <gasps> Gasp, I know, those people exist. You and I can't relate, but there are people. Okay, and for them to have an option that is not a cane or a guide dog would be incredible because if I think of myself, I grew up afraid of dogs, which is why my parents got a pet to try to help me get over that fear. But if I hadn't been able to overcome that fear or if I was allergic or just had a lifestyle where I couldn't afford financially to support a guide dog, they are expensive. Elton, you know, unfortunately does have a lot of health issues. That's expensive for me and I'm in a fortunate position where I can afford that, but I often think to myself that there are many people in the community who, if they had received him, probably wouldn't be able to maintain it. And that's a barrier to entry to receiving a guide dog. Um, and so for all of those people, I am so excited that they could be full-time robotic guide dog users. And again, like we could bling it out, you could customize it, make it your own, make a little fashion statement. Think of me, you guys, oh my God, this is me, okay? 10 years from now, I'm calling it right now. I've got my blingy VR headset, my pink robotic guide dog. I'm being guided out to my self-driving car that is parked in my driveway, I get in there, I go to the grocery store. My robotic guide dog is guiding me around all the other carts and people, and my VR headset is navigating me to the cheese section, because of course I'm going to the cheese section. It's Gallup's birthday. I'm creating a charcuterie in honor of him. And I am able to scan and find exactly the cheese that I want, no questions asked. Then I navigate back out to my car, get in, drive home, head to my kitchen, where all of my appliances are, of course, smart appliances, because, hello, smart homes, we're already living it, okay? We've already got smart homes. They are far from perfect, there's still a long way to go, but as somebody who has a lot of smart appliances and smart options in my home, I can tell you it has made such a big difference to my day-to-day -day life, and definitely in 2024, I'm gonna show you more of that. 2023 was kind of a really hectic year and honestly, 2024 is shaping up to be as well, but I really hope I'll be able to do more content sharing and showcasing ways in which my smart home is benefiting me in my life. It's only gonna get better. Like it's only up from here. And we as a disabled community are the prime customers for this. Like we are the people who will benefit. And with all of this technology, all of the biggest barriers, all of the hardest parts about being blind, mark my words, they will be removed. And with all of those removed, there's nothing we can't do. And right now, there's nothing we can't do, but there is, you know? Like, it's, it's hard out there. And discrimination is still a very real thing, and that is one barrier we will continue to have to overcome. But I think with technology giving us access to doing so many more things than we've ever been able to do, independently, easily, in real time, um, gaining access to things like employment will only get easier because so many of the barriers to gaining employment will have been removed. I'm just really excited. And yes, technology scares me, okay? There are aspects of AI that terrify me. There are aspects of VR and things like that that terrify me. But overwhelmingly, when I look at all the ways that specifically disabled people will benefit, I'm overwhelmingly excited about it. And I, I hope that our community doesn't get lost in the conversation when it comes to technology and designing these things because things are only inclusive and accessible when intentionality is put behind the design and lawmakers you know who are creating laws around these things need to be thinking of the benefits that it can provide our community to include us in the scope of that. Um, so I think there's still so much that we don't know. I, I just hope that if you're somebody who is scared of technology and scared of the future because the world is changing so fast right in front of our eyes, that you can also be excited by what this is going to have the opportunity to do for so many marginalized individuals who've been left behind for far too long. And it's time for us to catch up. 
and technology is going to be the way we get to do that. I really believe that. So comment. I want to have a really interesting discussion. Let me know your thoughts on this, whether you're from a tech world or not, whether you are disabled or not. I'm so intrigued to hear what all of you have to say about what I talked about in today's video. And until next time, you can click over here. Oh, I, I don't know if the mic just picked it up, but my hip just cracked. I gotta get to the gym. Anyways, my workout's in a few minutes. I'm off to the gym. You can click over here to see my most recent video. What did I even talk about? My God. Oh, PMDD. If you wanna learn about PMDD and my hormonal issues, click right there. And you can click over here to see another video that I recently posted. What was that one about? My brain's not working in all cylinders today. My apologies. I'm off to the gym. Bye.